If you guys would like to get yourself some official SimC merchandise, check out my Spreadshirt link in the description below for t-shirts, hoodies, mugs and cups. If you do make a purchase, send me a photo on Twitter, but regardless, let's get stuck into the video. Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How are you all doing? Welcome to the start of a brand new series here today on the channel. We're going to be starting a Civilization 6 playthrough as Robert the Bruce on the brand new Rise and Fall Civ DLC. So guys, I want to make a deal with you. If this video can hit 500 likes within 24 hours, I will do a double upload here today and release the second video, the second episode instantly. If not, you just have to wait a little bit longer for that next upload. Now, I can't stress this enough, guys. If you want to see more Civilization 6 on the channel, leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and let me know in the comment section down below feedback for this playthrough and future factions you would like me to and countries you'd like to play like me to play as in the future especially when I'm starting a brand new series on the channel this is my first time uploading Civ 6 I can't stress this enough I need your support let me know your feedback and suggestions now before we start the single player playthrough I've got to say a huge a massive thank you to the guys over at 2k and Firaxis. I woke up to an email yesterday saying Simsy would you like the rise and fall DLC for Civilization 6 and I was like hell yes I definitely want to do that but I actually don't own Civ 6 I'm more than happy this is what I said to them I'm more than happy to buy a copy if you can provide me with this DLC because I really want to play it they're like Simsy mate don't worry we'll provide you with the original copy of Civ 6 and the DLC so they just went out and splashed a hundred dollars worth of games on me which I can't thank you so much I've got to say a huge thank Thank you to the new social media and community manager over there in uh, over at 2K in Australia, the New Zealand region. I won't mention his name because I don't know if I can or I, I should. I don't know if he'd want that. So you know who you are. You're going to be watching this video. So a huge thank you to the new social media manager over there. He also went through and he actually sent me a care package. So there will be an unboxing on the channel with 2K related themes. And he also said if I needed any other game codes like XCOM and NBA, stay tuned. You'll give them to me over the week. So there could be an XCOM playthrough. I could definitely see myself doing that with Twitch, maybe being a little bit more interactive and over on the sports channel doing some NBA. So another huge thank you to 2K. Now, without further ado, let's get stuck into the single player series. So now, guys, this is my first playthrough on the channel. So please do take <laughs> this play with a, with a pinch of salt, I guess. So we're going to be playing as Robert the Bruce. Obviously, probably one of my favorite. Oh, we've got to play as John Curtin at some point. There's a whole host of factions and countries we can play as. So stay tuned for more Civ 6 gameplay and content on the channel. So we're going to be playing as Robert the Bruce. And I also got to do a video eventually. I got my Ancestry.com results. I am related to, in real life, a lot of Scottish lords. And maybe even Robert the Bruce doesn't go back that far. But I, I am related to a lot of noble Scottish lords. I've got to go through, I've got to make a video on my Ancestry.com DNA test because it's just fascinating as an Australian. I do plan to do that at some point. So we're going to be playing as Robert the Bruce. He can declare War of Liberation after gaining Defense Tactics Civics. Okay, 100 plus production. Two movement for the first 10 turns after declaring war. We've got the Scottish Enlightenment. We've got the golf course as well, the famous Scotty. Scotty? Scottish golf courses and, and whiskey distilleries and, <laughs> and just having having a piss up on the golf course, really. We've got the Highlander as our unique unit. Now, difficulty. Let's have a quick talk about difficulty. Now, obviously, there are eight rankings here. Settler to, obviously, Deity. Now, this is my first playthrough. I think we should probably play on the normal difficulty. I have played Civ 6 before, but I haven't since this new update, of course. I've, only, I have, I've had very limited experience with Liv, Civ 6. I have played a lot of Civ 5, but this is a whole other beast, especially with this new DLC. So I'm thinking maybe put it on Prince for the first playthrough. That's roughly what? One, two, three, four. So it's bang in the middle. It's on normal difficulty. We can up it in the game settings, I do believe, later on. And once we start getting the ball rolling, we can most definitely um, up the difficulty. Also, if you're going to play on Deity and stuff, it does limit you with the wonders and and whatnot because the AI does cheat at the end of the day. So we're going to be having a Prince playthrough. We're going to be playing on the quick difficulty. We're going to be playing on continents. We'll play on a small map size. I'm going to go quickly into the advanced settings. This seems to be pretty... Um, pretty okay with nine and, and this sort of stuff cultural domination religious victory and whatnot but i really just want to go through and add all the new factions 
Okay, I've gone through and added all the new factions. We've got Genghis Khan here for Mongolia. We've got uh, Pound Maker, Pounder Maker of the Cree, Wilhelmina of the Netherlands. We have Sionduk, I think that's how you say that. Oh god, correct me if I'm wrong. We've got Korea and we've got Tamar of Georgia. Now, funnily enough, on those Ancestry.com stuffs, if your ethnicity is obviously European, you're, you're white, if you've got like 1 or 2% Mongolian in your DNA, there's some crazy stat that 1 in 100 men are a direct descendant of Genghis Khan. So that's actually worked quite funny. I'm not related to him, but there's uh, a pretty funny story of some comedians I've heard that actually have done those tests and seen like 2% <laughs> Mongolian. Okay, I think I'm happy with this configuration. Let's get stuck right in to the series. Let's load in and have a quick uh, chat with Sean Bean, I guess. Water, to the great beasts of the Stone Age. To man taking his first upright steps, you have come far. Now begins your greatest quest. From this early cradle of civilization on towards the stars. Robert the Bruce. As the stalwart defender of Scotland, you are no stranger to war, yet rarely do you seek to inflict it. If you keep your people happy, you'll inspire them to greatness. Let anyone who takes advantage of your weaker neighbors meet your fearless Highlanders. They can teach the true meaning of freedom. Okay, let's get stuck into the Scottish Empire campaign. Right, okay, so what are we sort of working with here now? Right, so we've got sheep and milk. We do have some fish, and we've got a lot of crabs as a resource. So I am thinking of maybe a reroll. roll uh, <laughs> Just straight up. This is not going to be a very good position for it. We've got clams and stuff. I'm just sort of thinking we've got... Have we got hills? Is this technic... This is plains... Hill Plains. Uh, I'm trying to think, should I keep this one? Look, you know what? I'm going to have a crack at this. We could go through the sailing route. I haven't really done that too much. I've also, I've more so been with, like, um, bananas and citrus sort of stuff. But we've got some really nice animal husbandry here. We've also got some clams as well and crabs. So, you know what? Let's settle right on the coast here. We'll get a bonus to sailing. Let's get stuck right in. And let's actually move my warriors straight down. So we've got Sterling Castle here, of course. We've got a boost to sailing. So that's probably where we're going to go more so down the tech tree. So we might as well go straight to sailing. We can get fishing boats here. Uh, we also can get the galleys. I'm just trying to think how to get those other resources. What are we actually going to require? It requires sailing. Okay, so we're going to need more bonuses towards our fishing ships. So let's go straight down into sailing. Okay, production-wise, 10 turns for a settler, 6 for a builder, a scout, a slinger. We might be better off going with a scout than eventually a slinger. 10 turns before a settler. I'm just sort of seeing animal husbandry, so we're not really going down that side of the, the tree just yet. Oh, it's here, right. Then go to archery, perhaps, after sailing. That might be a good idea. Right, let's straight up just go for a scout. I think we're better off doing that because we can't work these animal husbandry tiles just yet. Okay, cool. Let's continue to move our... Oh, our warrior down. We've got a goodie hut down here. Right. Nothing else we can do here. Let's continue on. Oh, we've got a scout straight up. So we've got our first bit of conflict here with a barbarian. 25 to their 39. So we've done a decent amount of damage to their scout. Okay, before we continue on with this conflict with our first scout engagement, I quickly want to go through some of the new features for the Rise and Fall um, DLC. It should have come up before, but obviously I tested the game just to make sure it's all in order. It didn't pop up for some reason. So welcome to CF6 Rise and Fall. This is the guide to introduction and whatnot. So we've got historical moments is one of the new features, which gives you points towards error score and also indicates how well your civilization is doing on a, a really cool timeline. Then of course we can track the error score as well because there's, there's ages now. You want to avoid dark ages so you can earn golden ages. This is filled by the, the meter in the bottom right here. You're most welcome to pause and sort of have an in-depth read through, but this is just the general sort of gist. 
There's also an interesting loyalty mechanic. It measures how your cities are committed. Uh, citizens to your uh, blah, 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 loyalty. Okay, the city will rebel and become a free city. So you need to keep an eye on loyalty because you don't want your cities to leave and join other cids, uh, civs and uh, cids <laughs> and uh, ultimately rebel. There's also a really cool new governor's system which can stabilize city loyalty. Uh, kind of think of it like in the days of the old Roman Empire when we've got Gaul and Espana. Obviously, they're trying to fight and get really strong governors there to rule over the newly conquered regions and, and set up regions, really. There's also an interesting thing that we've done with alliances. They've actually sort of tweaked alliances. So alliances are now specialized and can provide ventures over time. You can enhance alliances. So you can have like trade alliances, defensive alliances, military alliances and whatnot. And... Um, sort of intellectual, sort of like science packs, you know what I mean? Like research packs. Another huge feature is the is the um, emergency packs. So civs can band together and declare emergency packs when critical events happen in games, such as a nuclear strike, which is really quite cool. See, kind of like NATO in real life. If you declare war upon one NATO member, they are you're at war with all NATO members. Um, so kind of like that, <laughs> I, I, I guess. So there's huge packs which are really quite cool, like huge mega alliances. And last but not least, they've redone the UI so it's easier to see critical information on your Cities tab. So there you go, you can go and review it as well. So there's some of the key features. Obviously guys, this is episode 1, so we're slowly coming into the game, I'm going through the new features. We're not going to have like wars instantly. So obviously the first episode of the series is a little bit slower and uh, we'll start picking up pace in the next couple of ones. Okay, let's continue on to the next turn. Let's have a crack at turn four. We'll continue to run down that scout. We're going to get mine. Oh, we've got a barbarian encampment spearman, no less. I'm just sort of trying to have a quick look to see if there's any really other spots we can have some cities. We'll have a crack at that goodie hut there. Okay, and then where should I swing my scout? Probably right is probably a better way to go. There does seem to see a lot of rivers there. Okay, so here we go. Here are some of the Scottish Empire Marks' history. Villagers bring gifts as they join our civilization. Excellent. Right, let's continue on. So these guys are quite low. I don't think they're going to do too well against spearmen. It's probably not a bad idea, since we're coming so close to barbarians to get a slinger. So let's get a slinger pretty early on. And I might actually pull my bloke back a bit because he's kind of been baited a bit there. Okay, the scout's pulled back. If I was to hit this, would it really, really reduce my health? Let's swing right here now. Okay, so we're still two turns away from getting slingers and that stuff. I'm trying to think, should I have a crack? I actually don't know. Where where does it say the odds? Okay, yeah. So it was actually really significantly in their favor, big time. So we're going to have to pull back. Hopefully they don't run me down. We'll fall back, we'll re-health, and we'll wait for those slingers to come. I can't move my scout anymore. Oh, I can. Man, he's hammering it across these plains. But it looks like we're really far in the north. Maybe we're better off getting another one and going right. My sling has been constructed or recruited, rather said. We'll swing you further down south. And we'll, we'll swing you back here to heal up. Can you actually heal up here? No. We're going to have to heal up back in our ter territory. But it doesn't look like there's much here to the right-hand side. Which could be a good and a bad thing, but it seems pretty sparse in the resource department. Okay, currently at turn 8. Uh, we're in a pretty, sort of, not good area. It's pretty sparse and desolate, to say the least. We've got a nice little, sort of, nook up here in the north. But looking over to the far right doesn't look quite good. We're going to have to swing you around here. We've got a spare production now. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can probably grab another set settler. We could go for another scout. The thing is, right, there's no point of building a builder just yet because it's a little bit far, far too far away before we get animal hu husbandry. We can start working these sort of sheep and cattle tiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go with the monument. It's going to increase our loyalty and also give us a little bit of additional culture. So let's... Cross our fingers and hope that comes to pass. Is Sailing sure. has now been completed. Fantastic. Rule the waves. So we'll swing back down to animal husbandry now so we can work those tiles. But maybe now it's time to uh, change this over here. Okay, let's uh, continue to push our scout down the coast. Oh! This present in the wet season. Waterfalls in every direction. We found Uluru. Fantastic. As an Australian, 
We've got to have a crack at that. Doesn't seem to be much good stuff around it, but what does it actually give us as a bonus? Culture, faith, and adjacency. Oh, fantastic! Uluru was formerly called Ayers Rock. But, uh, let's, uh, let's go down and have a look at that. So, looking at these bonuses, now, I'm not too sure. I'm pretty sure we can't work these. These are technically bonus resources, so do I, I don't need to build a fishing boat to work them or anything. We've actually got pearls here as a luxury resource, which is, resource, which is fantastic. And we're going to try and get you to heal up here where we can. We'll swing those slingers back around. We might better get some ranged attacks on it. But over here, man, like I said before, it looks quite sort of sparse. I'm hoping there's a river sort of nearby. So we've discovered a new wonder. We've got a, an astrology tech boost. Fantastic! Look at that! And it's in the mark of history now. Superb. Let's have a quick look at some of the world rankings. I don't know how far we're at. So we're currently in fourth in science, fourth in culture, first... Second in domination and sixth in religion. Yeah, I thought we we're in a pretty iffy sort of spot. Code of law, so we can actually get some better government policies. Discipline plus five combat units, double experience for reconnaissance units. I think we're better off going with combat because we're fighting barbs quite early. We can go with God King and urban planning. Probably go with God King. I think is probably our best bet. Let's confirm these new policies now. I need, yeah, we need them to heal up. That's what we want to do. We'll swing these slingers down to maybe pester them. And what we're going to have to do is swing down here. Yeah, it does, there's a goodie hut there, but... Man, it's not looking good for us at the moment. We've got an available promotion here. We have a new civic as well. Probably go with craftsmen. Foreign trade is probably not what we need just yet. Uh, you probably want to sort of go down the military sort of stuff. We still haven't found anyone yet, which is weird. We should have at least found someone. Maybe they're more so to the left-hand side of the screen. They've got their own slinger as well. The barbs are actually quite competent compared to what they normally are. We've got a little bit of gold here. We need more housing in our sieve. That's alright. We're going to be able to get that soon anyway. Okay, the spearmen and the slingers come out to engage us here. I'm probably going to pull back. I should be able to be in range, shouldn't I? No, I... Uh, I thought I could be in range of that spearman here. Okay, so this actually doesn't look like a bad spot. Right here on the river, we've got a mountain here adjacent. We've got a lot of wheat, but yeah, we want we want salt, we want citrus, we want truffles. We, we, there's not much sort of here. Like, that wouldn't be too bad of a spot. We can get that Uluru bonus, but still, that's pretty far from my capital, Sterling. Okay, let's continue on. Let's swing you probably further south, I think. I want to try and get you on that right-hand side. These warriors are back up now. Yeah, we can't have a crack at these guys just yet. Slowly but surely making our way down from Stirling Castle. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Worst Scottish in, uh, impression ever. Right, okay. So we're going to pull down against this barbarian camp where we can. We've got some spare production there as well. We could go for another set a settler. That might be a, a good idea. We can't really work these. Oh, we're going to be able to in a, in a turn or so. So let's actually build a builder. We're probably better off doing that than building that. Because we need to deal with... Um, we need to deal with this barbarian encampment. So animal husbandry is done. Fantastic. It might even be an alright idea to potentially, right? Maybe build a galley. Um, from what I can see here, it actually looks a little bit better down here. Sheep, bananas... Stone castle. Look at this. That looks awfully phallic, doesn't it? <laughs> Regardless, pushing up here north, we can choose a new research now. Um, probably go to archery. Archery is really good, especially in the early game. Archers are fantastic. Um, irrigation here. Maybe even, we might be better off going for writing though. But I think we should better off go for the archer boost. Get that range is is fantastic, especially in the early game. Let's continue on now. Funnily enough, guys, my last name is actually. Scottish. Oh, we've been hit here. Quite convincingly. We should be able to swing around and isolate these archers. They've got the one up on us, though. Maybe I'm better off having a crack at them. We might actually be able to hit them there. Yeah, you know what? We're going to win against these spearmen here. Yeah, and my... Wilhelmina of the Netherlands. Hello. It is my great pleasure to finally meet you. Anyway, the point I was going to make is my uh, what is it? Six times great grandfather is Scottish. He was born in Scotland, moved out here, and my last name is actually Scottish as well. 
So, uh, it's an honor to meet you, Wilhelmina. Right, um, I think we should because we haven't actually met too many people. Eureka! Wow, so we've got a huge thing here. A... Right, okay. The danger on the doorstep of Sterling has been defeated. The barbarians have been driven away. Excellente. So, we found Willamette. Ah, Amsterdam! Okay, that's really far south there. We want to sort of head here. But, if we swing up this way, it might not be a bad idea. We needed to sort of see this vicinity. But we've done well. We've done incredibly well so far. Let's swing around and hit these last lot. Okay, so we've got a new civic boost here as well. Tech uh, boosted into writing. So there's the Eureka moment as well. We've met a new civilization. Fantastic. And we've got a unit that can be promoted here now as well. So I looked a bit hairy at the start. Looks like uh, Scotland's coming through. The Netherlands sends you gifts of wooden shoes, cheese, and some delightful strutwaffle. Strutwaffle? Okay. Um, your delegates are more than welcome, to be honest. What are the Dutch going to do? Uh, we need to finish off these slingers. Let's have another crack. Freaky deaky Dutch. Everyone loves the Dutch. Okay, we're actually sitting on a pretty decent, significant amount of gold. My science is absolutely dog shit at the moment. 35. We'll swing my scout further north to have a look at Amsterdam. I'm tempted to spend some of this gold. We've got 184. So let's have a quick look at um, tiles. We could actually purchase a tile here. Um, but I think we're actually better off buying a galley. Having naval supremacy this early on in the game would be fantastic. And it also gives us a chance to sail down the coast. So I'm actually going to buy a galley. That's really going to help us in defense as well. So let's swing you out. And let's let you rule the waves down here. Next, I probably want to go for a... I'm probably going to get a settlement down here. That's probably our best bet. Um, these barbarians... Thank you. Right. Yeah, no worries, Wilhelmina. It's time to go for another builder. Let's get another one of them. And let's work this sheep tile. My galley can actually come out now into the seas. We've got some whales there as well. We'll swing you further north. Man, they've got a really good settlement here. Plus two pop. We'll finish off the last of these barbs, though. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. We'll swing them back up north. Because we're going to need to really get them to reheal. We've had a little... We've had a lot of early game sort of barb interaction already. Okay. I can't really swing you north anymore. We want to have a crack at there. That's where we really want to go. Further, the thing is, you don't want to really stretch your empire too thin, but this is probably not a bad spot down here as well. We've got an available promotion for my slinger. So we can go with garrison, combat strength, ranged against land when occupying a distance. I don't know if we're going to go to war too far away, because the thing is, right, we're not really that closely... Yeah, like, there's just so much room. We're not actually... We've got six other factions we need to contend with. I don't know if we're actually that close to them. So, combat strength, range strength. We're probably going to be hitting that probably more so. All right. So, let's swing down the coast here and see what is sort of going on. Oh, wow. Okay. So, it looks like we've got this entire northern part of the peninsula to ourselves. I don't... Yeah, that's the border of the map there. We're really up in the north like the Scottish, ironically. I still think I should probably hit there and probably build a third one down here. How many sh cities should I have at a time? We'll build a pasture here now as well. Swing my warrior further north. I think like four is like the ideal, isn't that like the perfect mix? Okay, I'm going to have to really rejig my uh, research, fix up my tech tree quite a bit. Because we were going for art tree, if you can remember. I wanted to use, get the archer for the barbs. But we're probably actually better off pushing a little bit further to ancestral navigation. We'll get astrology. We'll be able to build a shrine and stone hedge and maybe get a holy site. Then we're better off going through writing, I think. So I'm actually going to switch over to astrology. And that's going to take us six turns. And then we'll switch over to writing. We might be able to get stone edge. Stone hedge pretty early on. Right, okay. Lighthouse, great. The thing is, we sort of have to go down this side of the tree now as to our situation because we want to need to work these fish resources and, and crabs at some point. So, not really much else we can do for now. We'll swing back and heal up as best we can. Craftsman's been now complete. Um, what should we go with now? 50% production towards melee cavalry, double experience from reconnaissance. 
30% towards builders, okay, and production in all cities. I'm actually quite happy with the faith in gold and the combat strength. We're not actually building too many... Yeah, we're not actually building that many, like, military units as of yet. We can pick a new civic, though, as well. Um, let's have a quick look here. Yeah, we're better off going into state workforce, most definitely. Then we can get our first governor title. Okay, let's plonk down a farm. Build a pasture there. We need to heal up my warriors. My galley's moving down the coast. Okay, where can I swing my scout? We can't actually go that way, so we're going to have to go further down this way. Right, how are we sort of all looking? We've got... Builder coming in a couple of turns. Astrology now on the way. Government, we can't... I don't really want to change too much. But yeah, I'm surprised that we haven't found too many factions. We're really quite isolated, you know? Let's promote my warrior unit as well. Let's go with Tortoise. Let's go with that formation. Continue to swing down by the coast here. I thought there would have been maybe a couple more sieves down here or something. Oh, we've got, oh, there's a warrior there, though. Okay, I'm going to build a farm here. Let's build a housing unit. I think we, we might actually swing my units down here. Uh, we'll put the slinger down there, most definitely. But I want to keep my warrior here. He's not quite at, at full health. So basically, I want him to fortify until he's at full health. We need to harvest these resources. We'll swing, we'll swing my galley further down. But the more I just sort of look at this, it's like I think we've really got an unlucky start. It's... It's really far between the resources. There's not much, like, really good ones. Mostly just bonus, really. Yeah, we, we've been a little bit unlucky. But, hey, if we can push on and prevail, it'd be fantastic. By the look of it, the further I go south, the better it gets, you know? Like, look at this. Look how much spices are here. Like, guys, let me know in the comments. How hard would it actually to be to take a city this early on? Like, we could actually have a crack at maybe trying to take Amsterdam or, or something along those lines. Alright, let's quickly get these pearls and let's get these uh, crabs as well. It's probably not a bad idea, potentially buying the tile with the fish there. How much is it going to cost us? 35 in 4 turns. It's probably not worth spending the gold. Um, we're not going to get those builders back, are we? Maybe with the crabs. Wow, marble there as well. All right, let's continue to go down the coast. Amber. Okay, let's swing you further down. Astrology's now complete. Uh, Shrine, Stonehenge, and the Holy Site. You know what? We might actually be better off uh, switching over... Uh, where was it? Right, what I was going to get at, we might be better off switching over to Stonehenge. But the thing is, right, we don't actually have stone. Which sucks, but we probably can go with a holy site, um, and then get better planes. So where am I best to put put this? Hang on. Right, okay. So, oh, okay. It gets an adjacency bonus when it's next to wood, so we're better off banging the holy site there, then. Let's do that. We've also found the city-state of Stockholm. A new quest has been given. Recruit a great merchant. I don't think we're going to get any... any <laughs> we're not going to get one anytime soon. A lot of rice down here as well. Let's move my builder further north. We're not going to be able to improve that tile, but how many more turns until we get it, actually? Three. We're not going to get... 55? Bugger that right off, I reckon. You know what? It might not be a bad idea, spending that 55 to get that tile. Like, honestly. Because we really need to start working this sort of stuff quickly. 35, and it's going to be in three turns. We better... Because we're better off... Yeah... We'll buy that, okay, and we'll swing the crab up there and we'll, we'll work that. I think it's actually better off for me to not do... I wanted to really go for Stonehenge. I think we're actually better off going for the Settler. Three turns, we'll grab this region because you never know. It might it might go up quite quickly, so we'll leave my Slinger down here on it and then we'll, we'll, we'll continue the Holy Site in a minute. I think we're better off still going down this side of the tree now. Riding's probably not a bad idea as well, but we want to go for a Cestial... Um, Navigation. Five turns for riding. We need this science boost because I think we're going to get really left behind. We're currently 
what? You're currently second on science, third in culture, second in domination. We're currently leading in religion. So we just need to sort of figure out, do we want to go for religious victory or potentially a science? I'm not too sure as of yet. Okay, we'll move my scout. Oh, yeah, look at this, right? The Netherlands seem to be really pushing up north here. Go south, you buggers. If they forward settle me there, I'm going to be so angry. Okay, I can choose a pantheon now. Oh, we can do a religion thing. Right, cool. What order, What pantheon do we want? Look, you know what? We could get plus one production from fishing boats. Settings, we've got four, five around us. We could go with God of the Sea. I think that's probably our best bet. There's some really nice sort of production towards classical era wonders. There's even some real... Like, is, the thing is, right, is 10% higher growth rates better than the production? I don't know. We're going to go with God of the Sea. Uh, we're going to found this pantheon. There we go. The first prophet god of the sea, the Scottish Poseidon. Uh, and what not. Come on, Captain Cook. It's time to pull you further north here. Still have only encountered one sieve. Maybe they're further down this way. My god. Mine got. <laughs> one more turn until we get another settler. We might be able to settle in this episode. We'll see. Finally, my settler's been constructed. Let's continue on with our holy site. Five more turns. Let's swing you down here. Can I attach you to... Like, can, can you attach units these days? I think you can. I think that's how it works in Civ 6. Oh, no! The mighty Khan! Genghis Khan! <laughs> Oh god, it's an honor to to meet with you. Let's sample your hospitality, I, I guess. So there's their capital. Let's continue our sea voyage there. Odysseus and his ship. Right, so it looks like there's a whole bunch of nothing. Oh, Rotterdam. Oh, they've gone north. Not too north to me, but still... That you should be able to, hang on, create an escort with settler. Yeah, that's what we sort of want. Oh, got an achievement. Escort service. Hmm, I don't really know if I want that as an achievement under my books. Not gonna lie, guys, you have to respect escorts. It's the oldest profession in the world. I'm sending you gifts. Horses, youth bows. Ah, oh, your delegates are more than welcome. Excellent. But, yeah, Rotterdam's further north. So it's an interesting sort of sort of map. Oh, there's another city-state here. So it looks like the city-states have this pocket of the world. We'll keep my, my scout there. Let's swing you both down here. And we'll have a crack at having a... Uh, okay. I think there is the best bet. So we've got the mountain there. We've got Uluru. Even though we can probably... Uh, I'm just sort of thinking we've gone sort of like the sea sort of route. But there's actually not too much of it. Especially on this side. You know what? We could very well hit Rotterdam, and that's a really nice source of crabs down here. We might just sort of let the Dutch do their thing. Like even we even like swinging this way and getting that. That's where we're going to get the majority of our stuff. I can definitely see this city here being the breadbasket of the empire. Work these wheat tiles is going to be like sort of Africa, as it was to Rome, especially northern Africa, really. Oh, we found another city state, Auckland. Oh, they got a nice amount of sort of stone. That's cool. Philosophy's been boosted. I don't know if I'm going to bother, really, with city-states and stuff. It's it's alright if you sort of, like, unknowingly do some of the quests, but you're nearly better off just taking them out. But it's really... The thing is, right, with this map, it's just so far and, in, like, we're just going to be so spread out, you know? Oh, fucking hell, alright. Yeah, cheers, Bean. I wasn't expecting my galley to get ruffled up by some barbarians. Fair enough, alright. Swing you back north. There might be someone over here, you never know. Okay, we're nearly going to be able to found the city for this episode. Another goodyard pretty further away. 
Okay, time to choose a new resource, a research, sorry, production as well. We've still got a campus and a government plaza to go through. We're currently two turns away from getting a holy site. We've still got a granary we need to get as well. So we'll just sort of leave it at that. Research-wise, I think we're better off going to Cestial Navigation. Potentially going for the Great Lighthouse of Alexandria is also a best bet. One of the wonders. We've also got a new Civic. Let's go down the political philosophy tree. Cool beans. Uh, government type. It's probably not a bad idea. Maybe just switch over some of these cards because we're not fighting barbarians all that much. Concept double unit experience for exploration. Unit maintenance reduced by one gold. 50% production before classical melee units. We're not really doing that either. So I guess just having that ability to get that less, a little bit less gold. Faith in gold and per capita. I think we probably really, we might even need to go for like the religious victory. That might be a good idea. I don't know. Oh wow, it's time to appoint our first governors. It's taken us a while, but we're about to see this new feature of um, the Rise and Fall DLC. Oh wow, guys. So here are some of the potential governors. There's some really cool ones here. We've got the Castellan, which gives you an increased combat strength. Here are some of the promotions here. That's not a bad one. Uh, we've got the Cardinal here. I don't know if I really want to continue with this sort of religious sort of stuff. I might be better off going, I think the Educator is probably the best way for me. 20% increase in science and culture generated by the city. We've got the Educator here. Production towards theatre, campus. We also get some great bonuses. So I'm not sure which is sort of like the sort of like the min-max sort of one you really should go for, but I think I'm going to go for the Educator. We'll pop him in at Sterling Castle as well, and in regards to... We're probably actually going to be able to get a city very shortly. We're going to be able to get my next one. So in regards to cities, right, um, naming, maybe in the next series, I think I kind of want to keep it with the Scottish theme. So please wait. Why is it taking so long here? Oh, okay. There's... I think it's the Dutch having a crack at some barbarians. Or maybe the other way around. What's this? Why is this going on forever? Oh, the Dutch were having a crack there. Ancient era ends in 10 turns. Wow, okay. So we'll move our settler. Can we actually... Or can we unchain him now? That's what I'm sort of thinking. Okay. I was thinking we might be able to... Yeah, quicker get this city down because it's taken us a little while. Like to be honest, in what in my test playthrough for this, just to make sure everything is in order and everything's working, it didn't take us too long. I think just like we've had a really unlucky sort of start. But if we can push through it, it'll make us just the better. But please do take into consideration, guys, that this is my first playthrough up on YouTube. So there's gonna be some hiccups, there's gonna be some misplays. And there's going to be uh, some dick ripping. So let's um, found the city here, right next to the mountain and all the roots. Let's found the city now, the Scottish Empire. So is that actually no? But we are adjacent to it. Dumfries, right? So we'll keep my my lads down here. We need to pick a new production for this new city. You know what? I'll deal with the production in the next episode. Unfortunately, I've got to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. The deal still stands. If this video can get 500 likes within 24 hours, I will do a double upload here today and release the second video instantly. I really, really encourage you guys to leave any amount of support on the videos you can with a like, subscribing, a comment, just to sort of help me out, especially when I'm uploading Civ 6 to ensure more Civ 6 series and content on the channel. Please do support me and help me out. Once again, a huge thank you to 2K and Firaxis and uh, their social media and community manager and their team over there for sending me Civ 6 and the DLC for free. It's really helped out the channel a bunch, and I'm really, really humbled when game companies reach out like that and, and really help me out, do me a solid. So thank you so much once again. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comment section down below your feedback for the series, and if you'd like to see more, that's the best way to ensure more content. Leave a dislike if you're not enjoying the series. Check out my social media links if you want to stay connected with me. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all in the description below. Highly recommend Twitter. Every single time I post a video, a tweet goes out. It's much more reliable than the YouTube sub box. These days, to get all the notifications for the channel you have to click the bell of course to join the notification squad i do enjoy reading those comments
If you guys would like to get yourself some cheap and reliable games, check out my G2A affiliation link in the description below. Maybe you can pick up a strategy game you haven't picked up just yet. Maybe Hearts of Iron, maybe Crusader Kings 2, maybe a Total War. Check out my G2A affiliation link in the description below for cheap and reliable games. I do recommend going and checking out the prices even. There's some really good prices on there. Patreon and merchandise link in the description below along with the Steam group. Come and join the community on Steam. And on that note, unfortunately, I have to end the video here. Thank you very much much for watching once again make sure to take care of yourselves go out and have a fantastic rest of your day my name is been simsy goodbye really close cinematic shots here pushing through the bridge oh look at <laughs> that was probably the shot of the video there